right, and you are welcome to a Tuesday edition. By the way, Tuesday gets its English name from the Middle English Tuesday, which means Tales Day. I think it was a Norse god, a god of single combat victory and heroic glory. Yes, so may your day be glorious. Go for gold, go for excellence, because you deserve nothing less than the month of May. Good morning and welcome to a refreshing Tuesday edition of your premium breakfast show. I'm hoping that's not too much motivation for Mike, who we all know. We still have more. It's already too much, yeah? But hey, come on, I like that. Uh, we, we have quite a number of uh, days from the Nordic... Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, the, yeah, the Nordic the Nordic tradition and all of that. So I, I, there's this game I'm playing now, um, Odyssey, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So mm. when you mention your... The glory and all of that, that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. Yes. How are you guys doing this morning? We're all right, man. Definitely yeah, go for graphics, glory on a Tuesday. The graphics on that game. Yes. Oh, you're playing it too? Uh, I'm not playing it, I'm watching someone play it. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> but it's epic. Yeah. We have epic stuff happening today. Absolutely. The one show with the right amount of everything needed to give your day the right start and also the superb finish that it needs. Yes, so each day you get a chance at life. Remember, not every closed door is locked. Sometimes all you need to do Hopefully we're not pushing Mike too far. What? <laughs> <laughs> this more small. I know, just give us okay. more small. Don't worry. I won't give you any more. But whatever you do, guys, just remember to just push your fears aside and just carry on. Okay? That's not a uh, Mike. Don't worry. It's yeah. not another one. All right. So let's tell you guys. Uh, starting with our uh, well, each day of the week with a very very interesting prerequisite for an amazing day. This is where you get, or what you get. My name is Mazino Appeal. And I'm Titi Lyo So Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC across all social media platforms to be a part of the best breakfast show on TV. Take it from us. And remember, you can watch us live from absolutely anywhere across the world through our mobile app. Just mm -hmm. download it. Google Play, iOS, no matter what you're using, we're right there. And please follow us on social media, okay? Facebook, Twitter, everything. We are at TVC Connect. Mm -hmm. Now, for what we have lined up, let's give you the highlights of the show for Tuesday edition. Yeah, health is the greatest gift on earth. And we'll be joined by Anne Omolayo. Now, she's a certified caregiver. She specializes in geriatrics caregiving. She's a coordinator and founder of Jordan Spring Care. And today, she's going to be discussing how to manage dementia in the elderly. Tuesdays, we always have something for the parents. We have a parenting segment that's going to be coming your way. And uh, when it comes to parenting, there are always some really great topics mm -hmm. that we, uh, we focus on. And Iwalola um, yeah. mm -hmm. Ugulu is an educationist, marriage counselor, and she's passionate about building strong and successful families. She's going to be here to discuss parental favoritism and consequences on siblings. Now, that's a delicate one. Favoritism. Ooh, very, very delicate. <laughs> mm -hmm. And finally, joining us for an interesting conversation is a multiple award-winning actor and musician who is also a relationship coach, motivational speaker, Mike, mm -hmm. and <laughs> business consultant, Jimmy Odukoya, a.k.a. PJ, PJ. Yeah. is going to be joining us. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, like, oh if, if, if royalties were anything to go by in Nigeria, oh. um, uh, uh, she should be. What's her name again? The the singer. She I should be. It's a very old one. Shama Jesus. Very I mean, old. Uh, uh, it's well, a very it old one. So I don't know whether she, she should be rich by, by now. Mm -hmm. That is the original, actually. What yeah. you're listening to. Yeah, and so. I used to remember being when my first trips out of Lagos. Mm. Um, uh, when we would, this is Mazza Mazza now, mm. the bus parks. That mm. was a song that was always blaring out of those of speakers. those buses with speakers mm. in front of mm -hmm. their headlights and everything. And <laughs> like, wow, interesting. We're you talking know. about travel mm -hmm. and roads and everything. Mm. Today was a very interesting experience because the rains are here. Yeah. Mm. With a vengeance, I must say. Yesterday's yeah. rain was like epic. And driving to work today, everything changed. The entire dynamics of the road that you know, everything yeah. becomes very different because you can't ride over water like you normally would. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the worst time to ever r drive is after a rain mm. because you feel that, oh, it's not raining. I can just go through it, plow through it. But that, that, <laughs> that glide you that you I get when you step in your brakes. I think we should, yeah. get, we should get some, um, during this period, we should have some time where we can talk about driving tips mm -hmm. yeah. during the rainy season and generally because you hear some people, they tell you that, oh, when I, when I go over water, splashy, it washes the under. It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> people think so. You, you'll be shocked. The erroneous things people exactly. have in mind when wow. they're driving, especially when it comes to rains, man. Mm. You're doing yourself I've heard that much more harm than good. Yeah. I've heard it's rinsing my tires. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that before. I'm like, you know, really? Are you 
you sure about uh, this? Yeah, you know, there could be stones or, stones, or, or nails. And all the corrosion, that. Yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. The, what it's doing to, I mean, have you, have, you, oh. have you taken your car up and you've, have you looked under? Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. The metal, it, the steel, yeah. it doesn't do well with water. Mm. It doesn't do well. Water stays on it. it mm. It's it, the rust and all now, that. Now, the, the NMA has said that we're expecting over 200 days of rainfall in 2021. So please be ready. Gutters, mm -hmm. your health, <laughs> your everything, roof. your roof, yeah. all of that. Don't, don't. Okay, this is the best time to go and look for a house, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously, man. It is. It See is. the roof and you check know? out the road outside exactly. the house. So I'm a pivot file. I love driving in the rain, by the way. So mm. perfect condition. Ted Midland Bridge, heavy rain. Wow. 10 p.m. You are <laughs> dead. <laughs> Tell you what, let's uh, do the news right now. And when we get back, we'll uh, perhaps maybe find out some more dead, devilish things that Mike will do. Welcome. Without further ado, let's do the news. My name is Mazino Appeal. Now, the issue plaguing the minds of millions of Nigerians, that is the rising dimensions of insecurity in the country, is still raging. In the north-central zone of the country, specifically Benue State, at least 13 persons have been feared killed following an attack by armed herders on a Se and Gwem community close to Aondana uh, in Gwe West local government area. According to residents, uh, the attack has burnt down houses in the community in the early hours of Monday morning. Now, chairman of Gwe West local government area, Grace Ibadan, um, who confirmed the incident, said the, the attack left many wounded with survivors displaced and uh, now taking a refuge in Aondana town. Police spokesperson DSP Suwese uh, Enene confirmed the attack, but said details concerning the attack, number of casualties, and the extent of damage are yet to be ascertained. Gwe West, Agatu, uh, Makrodi, and Guma local government areas have witnessed a series of attacks in the last three weeks, with over 70 persons killed by suspected herdsmen. And still on the raging level of insecurity, bandits in Kaduna State, who are still holding 17 students of Greenfield University captive, say they must be paid 100 million naira ransom by Tuesday. Um, that's the 4th of May, or lose the students. That's the threat bandits issued yesterday to the Kaduna State government and parents of the abductees. The leader of the bandits, known as Sani Idris Jalingo, says uh, this, uh, said this during an interview with the House of Service of the Voice of America, where he also demanded 10 motorcycles. 17 students comprising 15 females and 2 males are in the custody of the bandits, and it was learned that one of them is a grandchild of the late 18th Emir of Zazal, Shehu Idris, whom he identified as Hamza. The bandits revealed that the families of the students had already paid 55 million to them, but he needed um, uh, that. But they had used this money for uh, feeding the students. He said. Now he vowed that it was his final warning, and should government or the students' families fail to meet his demands, all the students would be killed. And in Kogi State. The abductors of the chairman of Yagba West local government area, Pius Kolawole, are demanding a ransom of 100 million naira for his release. Mr. Kolawole was kidnapped on Saturday alongside some others on his way from Ilorin to his hometown of Igbe, the border town between Kogi and Kwara State. He was said to be in the company of the State Commission of Pensions Board Honorable Adebayo Solomon, who was shot dead by the gunman. And now to stem the tide of insecurity, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the establishment of the National Center for Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons. Retired Major General A.M. Dicko has been appointed as pioneer coordinator and the new, uh, for the new center, and it will be domiciled in the office of the National Security Advisor. Uh, this was contained in a statement by the head strategic communications office of the National Security Advisor, Zakaria Usman. Mr. Usman said the decision is part of federal government's efforts to restructure the country's security architecture and address emerging threats and, threaten, um, and threatening regional uh, mechanism of control, prevention and also regulation of small arms and light weapons. The center replaces the defunct Presidential Committee on Small Arms and Light Weapons and shall serve as the institution mechanism for policy guidance, research and monitoring of all uh, aspects of small arms and light weapons in Nigeria. The center will maintain international cooperation and also operate internal offices in the six geopolitical zones to ensure quick response and effective mobilization of resources.
And that's it for the news this morning. We already had a head start on our coffee gist, but no, it's not coffee gist just yet. It's time for the papers. Let's tell you what's making headlines in the dailies as you go out today and perhaps maybe pick one or two. Let's start with the Punch newspaper this morning as we are met with this headline. Outrage as Benway heard as murder 19. Bandits vow to kill 17 varsity students. ACF, Auto Middle Belt Forum, others express anger, say federal government lacks capacity to stop widespread killings. Bandits threatened to kill 17 of Dr. Kaduna undergraduates today after collecting 55 million Naira ransom. Demand 100 million Naira instead. At the top of the um, punch, external reserves lost $350 million in two weeks, says the CBN. And minimum wage, labor lashes, defaulting governors, back in Gigi, litigation threat. FG prepares 400 suspected Boko Haram sponsors, BDC operators charges. And at the bottom of the um, punch, a photo story here, scenes of a forest where an elephant was shot dead by unknown hunters at Omu Ogun State on Sunday. Um, this is by the Elephant Protection Initiative. There are more headlines on the Punch newspaper, but let's quickly find them on other dailies. This morning, let's move on to the, Gu the Guardian newspaper. And on the front page of The Guardian, state governments face historic liquidity crisis. Plan to spend 86% of yearly total revenues on recurrent bills. Withdrawal of CBN's budget support threatens survival. Lower down The Guardian, you'll find major reversal growth trajectory hits telecoms industry. Tell me about it. Sector loses 12.1 million subscribers in five months. Broadband uh, prep, uh, penetration drops 3.84% as 6 million Nigerians lose internet access. Uh, future GDP growth contributions look bleak. Stakeholders foresee faster recovery. That will be it for the Guardian newspaper. And let's move swiftly now to our next, which will be the Daily Tribune, or rather Nigerian Tribune. And the first big headline here, after 25 years, INEC to create 57,023 new polling units, battles external forces. And World Press Freedom Day, editors call for release of detained journalists, decry attempts to muzzle media, and NDLEA arrest varsity students for selling cannabis in textbooks in Niger. And raids uh, entries into Play 2, Enugu recovers drug, cakes, and also cocaine. And at the bottom of the Tribune, PDP offers to help Buhari profits way out of national crisis. No plan to topple Buhari's government, says the DHQ. Moving on now to our next paper, and that is, of course, the Nation newspaper. And the first big headline for the Nation, abductors threatened to kill 17 students after 55 million Naira ransom. Kidnappers give today as deadline for 100 million Naira payment uh, as the parents beg. At the top of the Nation, businessman arrested over emo attacks. Uh, Uzadima to leaders. Speak up, he says. And Mbaka, I took three expatriate contractors to Buhari. And finally, and this is what we might discuss inside of our coffee just Bill Gates ends 27 years of marriage with Melinda. What gives? Well, join us for the coffee gist when we talk about this extensively, myself, uh, Titi and Mike, in just about a bit. That will be all for our headlines this morning inside of the papers. We'll be right back with some interesting conversation. Welcome back. Now, health is the greatest gift that will ever be given, you know, um, and a lot of people understand this. If you've ever had to visit a hospital for your own health, then you'll understand what we're talking about. And uh, we're going to be joined, or we are joined right now, by Anne Omolayo. Now, she's a certified caregiver. She specializes in geriatric caregiving. She's the coordinator and founder of Jordan Spring Care. And today, we're going to be talking about how to manage dementia in the elderly. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Titi. <laughs> All right. So now, uh, for those that don't understand what geriatric care means, um, who are you taking care of exactly? Thank you for that question. Uh, we're taking care of the elderly, okay. um, the senior citizens, okay. people from the ages of 50 and, you know, count above. Up above. Okay. So basically we try as much as possible to show them love and compassion okay. because that the health challenges that come with the aging process requires a lot of patience, love and compassion. So... I, so would say. I know that there are a lot of um, questions about care for people in that age, yes. uh, a lot of myths as well. 
Yes. Uh, but one of what we're talking about here today is dementia. Let's yes. talk about what it actually is and how you can identify it. Okay, so it's, um, dementia is a cognitive mental decline okay. in one's uh, thinking ability, okay. memory, and other mental abilities. Okay. So it simply means, what it's tr it tells you is that there's a part of the brain mm -hmm. that is responsible for decision-making memory and language okay. is either damaged or diseased. Okay. So some of these um, uh, illnesses in terms related to dementia mm -hmm. actually affect them so much that it can't be cured. Okay. It can only be managed. Okay. Uh, sometimes it might even be as a result of an accident. And sometimes it mm -hmm. might be as a result of people's diet and lifestyle. Oh, wow. Yes, okay. the diet and lifestyle kind of thing. Like those that take a lot of alcohol, okay. um, poor diet, can actually, remember, in terms of your brain, whatever you eat boosts your brain. Mm. Uh, you, a lot of people will tell you, oh, I forget a lot. Mm. It's something they need to pay attention to now. Okay. I, I always tell people, old age, is a mirror effect. Okay. So if we add 30 years to our age right now, mm -hmm. we would be the elderly. Okay. And we would want that phase of our lives to be so smooth. So I always make a joke that, oh, please try as much as possible to live a lifestyle that whoever is taking care of you can be as amiable as you are. So a lot of lifestyle changes will, is really important for us right now. Okay. And dementia, one of the things, telltale signs of dementia is the repetition. Okay. They remember 45 years ago better than 45 seconds ago. So when you're communicating with them, they can say to you, for instance, for example, they'll tell you, I want to eat. Oh, please, I'm hungry. Okay. And then the food is in front of them. They'll still go, please, I'm hungry. Okay. And they finished eating. They'll still say, please, I'm hungry. Okay. And then it, they stop recognizing their loved ones. Gradually, they stop recognizing. And this is where we need the medical team. Okay, so now, um, in terms of medical care, um, a lot of, in this part of the world, yes. the elderly stay with their sons, daughters. They stay in their homes. Um, yes. Now, in, in many cases, kids or the kids of these people are gearing themselves up, preparing their minds for, you know, having them live with them. But have you ever had, um, you know, situations whereby you've had to advise um, people at home to take these patients or well, these uh, elderly to your care home? Okay. Um, right now, um, there's a lot, like you said, mm. a lot of um, information, mm. but it's not getting to the right set of people. Okay. So they do not know what to do with them. Yes, they, they are geared towards, okay, I, my dad is aging and I need to bring him home, but mm. they, ha they hesitate because they know that they come with their health challenges and they really do not need to hesitate if they have the right information. And that's why, um, first of all, I train. Because if you say you have a facility where you have the elderly, you can't do it all by yourself. You need to train other people in even first aid and basic life support. Because if you don't have that structure in place, you, do not, you cannot help everybody. So you have to even educate the family that this is an aging process for them. They really need to understand that. Once they understand that, and the whole idea of, oh, um, I don't want to take my um, father okay. to a home simply because they'll think I'm an ungrateful child, that is very terrible perception because you don't have the time. You go to work from, let's say, six in the morning. Your loved one is at home. Because they have dementia, a lot of times they get lost in their environment. Okay. And there's nobody to assist them. That's where the care facility um, actually comes to mm -hmm. bear. All right, so now um, for those who are probably watching at home, what are the telltale signs to, you know, that they should look out for to find out if dementia is really a factor with their care? One, one of the common signs of dementia is forgetfulness. They forget a lot. 
And if you notice, some people, I'm sure you can identify when you talk to, maybe you've spoken to um, your grandma or somebody and they keep telling you, oh, in 19 something, I was this, this, this. They don't come to the present, they go to the past. Okay. And there's a lot of disorientation when they're in an environment. And that's because, that's what you call sundowning. The lights tend to affect them a lot. So they are, they are wandering, they're trying to find things. And then the process of finding, in fact, they can't even remember where the restroom is. Mm. I mean, they are mm. all right. They probably still work, do all the other activities, yeah. but they can't remember where they kept things. I think at this point we have to wrap up uh, on this conversation, but we'll continue on social media. Please talk to us uh, at TVC Connect with the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. This issue of dementia and uh, care of your loved ones, your older loved ones, and uh, she will be helping answer some of your questions. We'll see you again next week. Thank you. At this point, we're going to be taking a quick break, but we will be back uh, with Mary. I think Mary will be able to take us to that break, yes? Welcome to the kitchen. Today we have Chef Adex, and he's going to be preparing breakfast for us. Now, I'm as curious as you are as to how he's going to make use of all of these items. The most interesting for me, though, is the crab meats, because crab meat is not something we get this way so much in Nigeria. Usually, you eat it directly from the crabs. But we get to that point. What are we having for breakfast? OK. This morning, we are having crab and yam cake, Benedict. Crab and yam cake, Benedict. That's yes. what we're having for breakfast. Let's yes. talk about the ingredients. What are we making use of? OK. For the first ingredient here, we have is salt. OK. This is our sweet spice. OK. Cayenne pepper. OK. This is our black pepper. OK. This is the cooking oil. OK. Yam. OK. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. For Le this amount of yam, this amount of mayonnaise, that's scary. <laughs> lemon. Yeah, this is lemon, okay. fresh parsley. OK. Avocado. OK. These are white vinegar. OK. These I have homemade Hollandaise sauce. Okay, I how made, did you put this together? I made it last night. Okay. So all you need for this is just egg yolk, white vinegar or lemon juice, okay. salt, a little bit of black pepper, and butter. That's all. Oh, it doesn't have to be used immediately. It can be made like the day before. Yeah, you can make it. Maybe even you can stay for like a week or more than oh, that. Oh, wow. In the refrigerator. Then. Yes. Okay. Then, of course. So these are crab meat. So this is the crab meat I'm talking about. <laughs> this eggs. Then our breadcrumbs. Okay, so let's get started. What's the first thing we need so to do? So the first thing is to start with our yam. With the yams? Yes. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do to the yam? Just peel it, then, then boil, boil it. it. Yeah. Okay. So, so after that. Okay. Right. So while you're peeling and boiling, All run right. me through the process. What's the cooking process like? Okay, the cooking process, so once we are done, cook, once the yam is cooked, okay. so all I need to do is grate the yam or oh, you have roughly to... chop it. Ah, why, why, why don't you just grate it from the beginning then? No, no, you have to boil it first. Before what? you can grate it. Because yes. I'm used to when you want to make anything like no, that the, has reason, to be the reason why we have to boil the yam first, yes. because I'm not deep frying it. Okay. So we are going to only oh. toast in the pan for some oh. time. Because if you, dis, if you want to deep, deep fry it, you can easily grate it so that the yam can be perfectly cooked. Okay. So, but I'm not deep frying, so I have to cook the yam for some time. So it's more like before having grating. it soft already exactly. before you now start the cooking exactly. process. Exactly. Okay, so when you finish grating the yam, go ahead with cutting the yam. Right. But when you finish grating the yam, what will you do next? So after grating the yam, okay. so I will combine the spices with the mayonnaise. Okay, a little all bit of, of the spices? Yeah, a little bit of, okay. no, not all, oh. some. Which one? The, the soya spice, the cayenne pepper, black pepper, salt. Then okay. a little bit of lemon juice in the mayonnaise. Okay. Then before we now combine the crab. Into, the, where, where will you put the crabs? No, the crab and the yam comes together. Okay. Then we add a little bit of the bread, what is it called? The, the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs. Okay. Are we binding. going to be frying? No, no, we are not going to fry, We're but with a little bit of oil. With a little bit. So it's more, yeah, almost in, like just uh, toss it in oil or maybe you can exactly, seal or something. Exactly. Okay, so let, let, let's go on with this. All right. What are we going to use the eggs for? The egg, we are going to poach the egg because we are still going to add one of the egg inside, inside the Inside this, okay. Yes, for the binding also. Then we are going to poach like two eggs for the serving. Okay. So if... while the avocado, we are going to slice the avocado on top of the yam and egg. Ah, oh, so it's like a side, kind of, like exactly. a... Exactly. So normally this one on its own, the crab cake, 
Okay. It's just like a starter. Yes. Or at the same time, you can use it for breakfast. Okay. It's but this cookie. one, like this now, is the breakfast. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as it is, eh, it all still sounds kind of complicated to me, uh, but I'm sure uh, as we go on, we'll definitely get a hang of what it is we're going to have for breakfast, okay? Uh, right now, we'll take this break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, back to the kitchen. And we still have Chef Adex uh, making breakfast for us. What did you say breakfast is again? Crab and yam cake Crab Benedict. and yam cake Benedict. That's what we're having for breakfast. So crab, this is the crab, and yam cake Benedict for breakfast. Now, what makes it Benedict, the eggs? Okay, the, uh, it, the sauce was, it's because of the sauce. That is the Hollandaise sauce, okay. which I already made last night yeah the egg yolk uh, the vinegar did you use vinegar or lemon no no lemon one? juice you use salt, lemon juice for this one black and pepper, salt with black pepper then clarified butter okay okay all right so um we have our crabs here we have the eggs boiling what's the, the yam, next the one? yam, the yam boiling. Boiling, so the next so nice next, to i'm just waiting for the, the water to boil a bit then we poach the okay so egg. how are you going to go about poaching okay the for eggs? the poach we are we need to add a little bit of the Vinegar. vinegar, the white okay. vinegar. So the reason why you are adding this vinegar, okay. it binds the egg white and the yolk together. Oh. So it stops it from separating. I, I would have thought that eggs, um, egg yeah, um, white and um, yolk naturally bind together. No, but normally you are supposed to add the vinegar to it. That actually yeah, so makes that it. it wraps the white around the yolk. White around the yolk. We'll yeah. see how this is going to pan out. And I'm actually very interested in checking this out. Okay, so you put in the vinegar? Just yeah. So we we'll just wait for the water to boil. Then okay. After that, before we need to crack the egg okay. inside our rami kimbo. Okay. Uh huh. All right. So how many eggs are we making use of? Uh, I think maybe like two. Two. But eggs. normally I only need one for the plating. Okay. One okay. for the plating. Okay. So um, this. It's going to be pouring like this. You're definitely not beating yeah, it. Yeah, I'm still going to wheel, just to... Whisk it when it gets yeah. into the water. Okay, now I understand why you have to put the vinegar. Because when you whisk it when it gets into the water, so, everything is going to just exactly. go apart. So as oh. the water is whiling, the white will be wrapping... The egg, the yeah, yolk. The, yeah, oh, wrap it now I yolk. get it. Now yeah. I get it. Okay, so that's for the eggs, right? That, that's for the poached egg. Okay, so the poached eggs, what are we going to use with them afterwards? Okay, so once we are done with the crab and the yam cake, yeah. so for the plating, okay. you only, after the yam cake and the crab is ready, yeah. so we need to get some slice of avocado. And then we put it by the side. It it, so are we, going to, are we going to fix this now? You said you're going to so put the So we are going eggs. to fix it. Okay, we are let, going let's to... do this now. So right. we have everything prepped. It's just for us to put them all together. Exactly. Okay. So you break an egg. So yes, oh, there's sir. no separation of egg. No, no, you don't need to separate. You don't need to separate. Put it all together. Exactly. So okay. you add your. This is suya spice. spice. Okay. Then this is the cayenne pepper. So it's funny how suya spice has found its way into cooking. No, you can put it yeah. in. Okay. You know this is. We are talking about Afro fusion. So we just. I'm just trying to do something in such way you bring the intercontinental spice into with our Afro. local. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that is okay, what okay. I'm trying to. Okay. Makes to a do. lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. So, so you're not putting in pepper for this one? Not necessarily. No, no, I've added the cayenne pepper already. This is the cayenne pepper. No, I'm talking pepper. about the black pepper. The black, I'll add a little bit okay. of this. So I always feel like black pepper is magical. It's, it does a lot to oh, many dishes. It does a lot. Okay, so um, we have almost everything ready. It's just for us to finish with the uh, cooking, okay? Uh, so we'll definitely run you through the rest of it at the end of the show. If you started from the beginning, you'd probably have... Uh, been able to get his description of the whole process, so you can put it all together much later. We have to take this break because we are at the top of the hour. There's still 45 minutes left to go. Stay with us, it's Wake Up Nigeria. And truly, time waits for no one. Welcome to the second round of a super exciting time on this breakfast show. Wake Up Indeed. Nigeria. It's the second lab band. They say the number two is associated with balance. And we strive for balance here in Wake Up Nigeria. So many good things to come the next 45 minutes. By the way, yeah. it's May the 4th. May the 4th. Can you do it? Can you, May do, the, it? Can you do it? It's that. Uh, 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 Is that Star Trek? That's it. Yeah. I don't know. The, May the 4th it. be with oh, you. If you, are a, <laughs> if you are a Star Wars <laughs> fan, then you associate the meaning of what we're trying to pass across today. Every Star Wars fan looks forward to May the 4th. <laughs> yes, so hey, 
May it be with you. Mm -hmm. It's time to wake up, get productive, and quit lazing around. Uh, well, welcome once again to the show. My name is Tita Lai. My name is Mazino Appeal. In the kitchen, we have Mary Bashra Alimi getting ready everything scrumptious for this morning. Mary, what's going on in there? As you can see, uh, the chef has begun to grate the yam. It cannot be an easy task. Reason is the yams are hot right now, mm. like really hot. Uh -huh. And he's having to grate them. Uh, so it's making it easy. The grating process is easy, but uh, the holding process is definitely not easy. It's quite hot. I don't envy him right now. Uh, so, well, we still have a lot to do here. We'll I definitely can imagine. get around I to it. I can imagine. Well, hey, yeah. if you missed that recipe, don't worry. The show is still commencing or rather still going on. You'll get to find that out. You want to check us out on social media. We are at TVC Connect. Yes, so uh, and, of course, you can also use the hashtag. Wake up Nigeria on TVC. Now, remember, you can also watch us live from absolutely anywhere across the world. Just use our mobile app from Google Play or iOS. Oh, yes, indeed. So after following us on all our different handles, we are going to be telling you what's up for the next 45 minutes. On parenting, Iwalola Ugulu, an educationist, marriage counselor, uh, who's passionate about building strong and successful families, is going to be here to discuss parenting favoritism and its consequences on siblings. And finally, we will be joined by a man of many talents for an interesting conversation. Jimmy Odukoya, a.k.a. PJ, is a multiple award-winning actor and also musician who is also a relationship coach, motivational speaker, and business consultant. He does everything. He will also be joining us and giving a tryout of being a host. <laughs> It's all fun and games. Yeah, fun and so games. It reaches the top of that ladder. And then yeah, so. <laughs> there's no one there to open the door. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> yesterday was a buzz with uh, Marvel. Oh, tell me about it. I have the info here. Yeah, mm -hmm. they released a, a, a short trailer. It was more or less like a transition. So they had um, some clips of Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase yeah. 3. And then they showed us some clips of was Phase 4. Was that Lee's voice? Uh, that Lee's seemed voice like, like um, it seemed like, what's his name now? Um, Spider-Man, what's his name? Spider the one who passed on. Uh, it's oh, not Stanley. Stanley, 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 Stanley. Stanley. That yeah, seemed like, it seemed like Stanley's voice. Yeah, it was. And, uh, but you see, one interesting thing is that um, with what I've seen so far with the series and with the short clips, mm. I'm not too excited about Phase 4. Oh, oh well, really? I know. Yes. I know. With the sure? series and, yes, Phase 4, it mm. seems like... It's going to be kind of like a decline. Of, yeah. Um, so Especially with uh, Eternals. I hope they don't mm. mess up Eternals. Mm -hmm. So, you know... I'm looking at Black Widow mm. will be out next month. Mm. We'll go to cinemas, go check that one out. Marvel yeah. has never really been known for its series, though. You know, it's always they, been it's DC that's been try. known for its series. DC They're giving it a fresh more try. more money from their series than Marvel ever okay. had. Yeah. So I never really expected that. And you know, it's funny that you talk about Deep, because mm. uh, with all the buzz about Godzilla versus uh, <laughs> Kong, mm. I took myself and my yoga to this... Was that <laughs> we went again. It went, ah! But this time it was a different cinema. Mario. And then I don't mind me, nice like, fire. And then we nice got there one. and then the stuff is going and I'm waiting for this climax. So. Uh. And I'm waiting. <laughs> and then it ended and I'm like, okay, is so it? is this it? I want my money back. I, did, I was actually in that mode of I want my money back. Welcome second time around for the news here on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Jimmy Appeal. Now, the issue plaguing the minds of millions of Nigerians, that is the rising dimensions of insecurity in the country, is still raging. In the north-central zone of the country, specifically Benway State, at least 13 persons have been feared killed following an attack by armed herders at Se Angwem community, close to Aondwana in Gwe West local government area. According to residents, the attack has burnt down houses in the community in the early hours of Monday morning. Chairman of Gwe West local government area, Grace E. Bandong, uh, who uh, confirmed the incident said the attack left many wounded with survivors displaced and now taking refuge in Ondana town. Police spokesperson DSP uh, Sewesi Anene confirmed the attack but said details concerning the attack, number of casualties and the extent of damages are yet to be ascertained. Gwe West, Agutu, Makordi and Guma local government areas have witnessed series of attacks in the last three weeks with over 70 persons killed by suspected herdsmen. And still on the raging level of insecurity, bandits in Kaduna State, who are still holding 17 students of Greenfield University captive, say they must be paid 100 million naira uh, ransom by Tuesday, the 4th of May, or lose the students. That's the threat bandits issued yesterday to the, to the Kaduna State government and parents of the abductees. The leader of the bandits, known as Sani Idris Jalingo, said this during an interview with the House of Service of the Voice of America, where he also demanded 10 motorcycles. 
17 students comprising 15 female and 2 male are in the custody of the bandits and it was learned that one of them is the grandchild of the late 18th Emir of Zazao, Shehu Idris, whom he identified as Hamza. The bandits revealed that the families of the students had already paid 55 million uh, naira to them, but that this was used as uh, feeding money for the students. He vowed that it was his final warning, and should government or the students' families fail to meet his demands, all the students would be killed. And in Kogi State, the abductors of the chairman of the Yagba West local government area, Pius Kalawale, are demanding a ransom of 100 million naira for his release. Mr. Kalawale was kidnapped on Saturday alongside some others on his way from Ilorin to his hometown of Igbe, the border town between Kogi and Kwara State. He was said to be in the company of the State Commissioner of Pensions Board, Honorable Adebayo Suleiman, who was shot dead by the gunman. And to stem the tide of insecurity, President Mohamed Buhari has approved the establishment of the National Center for Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons. Retired Major General A.M. Diko has been appointed as pioneer coordinator of the new center and it will be domiciled in the office of the National Security Advisor. This was contained in a statement by the head strategic communication office of the National Security Advisor, Zachary Usman. Mr. Usman said that the decision is part of federal government's efforts to restructure the country's security architecture and address emerging threats and strengthen regional mechanism for control, prevention and regulation of small arms and light weapons. The center replaces the defunct Presidential Committee on Small Arms and Light Weapons and shall serve as the institutional mechanism for policy guidance, research and monitoring of all aspects of small arms and light weapons in Nigeria. The center will maintain international cooperation and also operate zonal offices in six geopolitical zones to ensure quick response and effective mobilization of resources. And that's it for the news, second hour. With that source and juice, we move over into our parenting segment this morning. We have Iwalola Ugulu. She's an educationist and marriage counselor who's passionate about building strong and successful families. Now we are discussing parental favoritism and its consequences on siblings in parenting. Very, very, very interesting topic because I, 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 uh, sibling rivalry is something that I've come across at different times and all of that. So... Um, yeah, so that's what. Okay, but then um, we'll just we'll just we'll just get across to that now. We'll just take a very very short break and um, we'll be right back. That's like mix up at the beginning. Our topic today is raising positive children, and of course, uh, Iwalola Ihulu is our guest today. It's great to have you. I pronounced it well this <laughs> yeah, time, right? You're welcome. It's great to have you on the Thank show this you. morning. Thanks raising for positive me. children. Yes. Who's a positive child? Fine. Um, let me start by saying that um, if you want to give your child the greatest gift in life, raise a positive child. So okay. who is a positive child? A positive child is a child who is raised to be confident and happy. Mm. A child who, is, um, who displays positive behavior okay. and have, you know, um, an op optimistic outlook on life. On life. Yes. I like that. An optimistic that's, that's a, a positive outlook. child. That's a positive child. Yeah. I like that. An optimistic outlook of our life. Yes. So how? I, 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 it, it's quite, it's a lot when it comes it, to raising a child. Yes. But let's see what we can cover today. How, okay. do, how do you start? How do you begin okay. to, raise, to raise such a child? Yeah, thank you. It takes a positive parent to raise a positive child. That is to, to, to tell us that it starts from the heart. Hmm. Yes, if you want to raise a positive child, that means it should start from your heart. If you're saying that, does the parent need to work on his or herself before? Very well. Very if, well. There, if, if, if there are some things that were not, you know, put it, uh, that are not in place yes. for the parent, that's what yes. you're saying now. Very well. That means because that... if, you're not, if you are not positive yourself as a parent, that is not how you can raise a positive child. Wow. If you're a negative parent, of course, negative breeds negativity. Mm. You can't breed, breed a positive child. Mm. So as a parent, you must be a positive person. You, mm. must, you must be positive-minded, have positive, you know, outlook. The way you reason, the way you do your things. Okay. Yes, it has to be in, uh, positive okay. before you can raise a positive child. Okay, so okay. we're talking about the process now. How okay. does that process come into play? Now, Esper says it takes 70%. Your children take 70% of what they see in you. Why they take just the 30% of what you ask them to do. Yes. So your actions speak louder. What speak they see louder. you do. What they what see you, you see. do on a daily basis. If your child sees you that you are always happy, 
you smile, you're jovial. That doesn't mean they are not you don't have challenges. Okay. But you always smile. Your heart look is always happy. Okay? That child is watching. Mm. And mind you, you are starting early. You're not starting when the child is um, a teenager or something. Mm. It's something that you start early. Mm. As the child is growing up, they see you, they watch you. As a matter of fact, you are their role model. So whatever you want to see in the that means you model it. You model it. Yes. I so you that. model positivity mm. as your children are growing up. Are growing up. Yes. Now it gets to the point where a lot of people have, um, the, it's quite challenging when a child now gets to the teenage years and becomes susceptible to uh, external influence, peer influence, peer pressure and all of that. That, that. that brings another dimension. They start picking things from outside. Yes. They come into the house with things that they've picked from outside. In that kind of scenario, and then, you know, considering the kind of world we live in, at times it, it can be quite negative out yes, there. Yes. And then I'll start picking these negative traits, even after you've tried to imbibe them with these positive traits at the beginning. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, manage such a, a challenge? Okay, if you have done your assignment very well, like I said, if you start early enough, before the child gets outside, don't forget that family, um, life starts from the family. Because family is the first... The, yes, the building yeah, block, the, the, building block, the yes. foundation. Before your child starts relating with outsiders, you must have done your assignment as a parent very well. That means you're always there. You make yourself available. You answer their questions. You listen to them. Mm. Yes. It's not something that, you just, that happens by magic. No, it doesn't work, work that way. Mm. And you don't expect outsiders to do the work for you as a parent. So you must have started your work early as a parent by raising them positively. Give them, you know, for them to ask questions. Mm. Let them talk to you. They should be able to talk to you. They shouldn't see you as one almighty, oh, daddy, mommy, I can't move closer. That means you have to have a listening here. When they want to talk, make sure you listen. Mm. Because if you don't listen to them, the question they want to ask you, definitely they will ask outside. And whatever answer they get, that's what they hold, hold on to. That's what they hold on to. Yes. Okay. So whenever your child wants to talk, make sure you are interested. That's the challenging part, because we were not raised up that way. <laughs> we, but but we some, don't, of we don't. Us, some of us were raised that way. Okay. Yes, and some people still do. Mm. So you listen to your child. If you don't listen, please, who will? Outside that wound, they, they don't know how you want to, what you want for your child. They don't know what you want for them. So listen to them, what they have to say. Ask them questions. Get into their world. Mm. Know what is going on with them. With them. Yes. When a child is moody or some, feeling somehow, as a parent, come around. Mm. My angel, what is wrong with you? Mm. Is there anything wrong? Can mommy, can you, talk, you can talk to mommy. You can mm. talk to daddy. But if you are not there, and the children can, you can actually watch, they can read very well. If you are not available, they know you are not available. So once you are not there, they go outside. Mm. But before a child gets to a teenage year, you must have done your assignment very well. I believe if you do a, a thorough one, the mm. child won't have so much problem. Mm. Meanwhile, when you're trying to raise them positively, tell the child that, okay, Disappointment will come, failures will come because failures are part, actually part of life. Mm. But when you're disappointed, when you're faced with you know, all sorts of things, how do you come out of it? Of because it. when you are down, you don't stay there. You don't stay there. Yes. The only you way to go for, is up. It, Yes. How to come Positivity. out of it. Like that. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. This was Thank quite you. instructive and enlightening. Uh, this will be available on YouTube, so you can check out if you need to go back to uh, get what are. Uh, expert said this morning. Thank you so much. It was quite Thank instructive. You. All right. So yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, uh, the, the 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 positive. Uh, maybe I the the positivity in that kitchen. It is I don't only know. food that can. Relax. Calm you. down, Mary. I'm sensing some negativity. I'm coming there to take it out because I'm I'm, I'm positive negativity? now. <laughs> Mike. I'm what coming negativity? to bring to imbue my positivity into that kitchen. Mike. Mike. If I see your legs here. We we'll use it for yeah. We we'll use it as the uh, mic and yam cakes, Benedict. That's what we're gonna make. <laughs> Welcome back to the kitchen. We just want to show you um, exactly how far we've gone and uh, just what we've achieved.
Uh, so these are the crab cakes? Yes. Okay, so this is the yam and crab cake, cake. or crab and yam cake, Benedict. Yeah, whichever case, way is fine. Yes, uh, so this is the poached egg? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, can we plate it? While okay. you run us through how we went about it. But this one, okay. you know when you cut avocado, within seconds, it's already dark. So aren't you wondering how come we can, you know, confidently leave this? There's a reason. <laughs> it's not until we perform magic. Tell us what you did. Okay. So one thing about avocado is that, so once, after cutting it, if you leave it just like this, yeah. after some, you notice it that. Dark. It, yeah. So yes. all you need to do, just squeeze in some lemon juice. Okay. So what the lemon juice does, it stops the oxidation process. Immediately. Immediately. But this can only last for about, say, 15, 20 minutes. It can last up to 45 or an hour. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can so try it. I'm going to take you to that because right, we cut this up about uh, 10 minutes ago. There you go. And so it's still looking very there's still fresh. about 15 minutes or thereabouts before our guest comes for breakfast. So you will be here to witness it and then we'll hold Chef Adex response. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's play. Let, let, let's let's quickly do that. Let's oh. put it all together. All right, ma'am. Okay. So first, the cakes. The cakes. Uh, one cake at a time, literally. Okay. So then. Oh, put that yeah. cake as well. Okay. Then so our avocado now. Okay. Go need to go around that way. Yes. Okay. So, of course, I can always add anything I want to add to it. Sure, you can. Ma. Bacon, okay. sauté spinach, okay. whichever way you want it. Okay, okay. Okay. So, um, that's about it, really. We will definitely see the end process of Chef Adek's efforts this morning in the kitchen. And talking about end process, you know, of course, the show is drawing to a close, but not before we have... This very interesting conversation that is loading din, din, with a mazino. <laughs> Ah, I like that segue. It's all good. Our last guest today on the show is multiple multiple award winning actor and musician Jimmy Ogukoya, aka PJ. <laughs> he's also a relationship coach. He's a motivational speaker. He's also a business consultant. He's a man who wears many hats under or over his dreads. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, it's great to have you on the show thank here you, today. Thank you for having me. Sir. Yes. Thank now, um, I learned so much about you over the past couple of days, expecting that you were going to be with us here. And the fact that you are a pastor <laughs> is one that sticks out out of the many things that you have delved into. Right. Um, we know that you do motivation. We saw some of your videos and your skits. I don't know if you're even into comedy because they were quite <laughs> funny. But that if I met you and someone said, oh, that's my, my, my pastor at my right. church. Uh, What's well, church? 316. <laughs> Is it? It's 316 and the cave. 316 and the cave. Yes. yes. Um, I wouldn't think that that was a pastor. I'm right. like, no, it couldn't be. But right. you are. Right. So tell us exactly how this has um, influenced you, your motivation, your life generally and all. Um, I, I think especially in this part of the world, people have presuppositions or they have assumptions on how pastors should be or what they should look like. Mm -hmm. I think we like to put people in boxes. Yeah. And then when people don't kind of fit the narrative we've created, then they realize the problem. So when people hear pastor, they expect old, skinny, Narf. Narf, <laughs> nerd, walking slow motion with a big old Bible, yes, and with holy water spread, exactly. And you know, and then when they see me, you know, work out, got beard, now dreads, you know, it's like, how do you marry the two? And it's, it's, it just shows that it's about what's in the heart, you know. Yeah. We get so stuck on all the things that really don't matter, and what mm. really matters is relationship with God your relationship with him and your heart. So um, for me, it's allowed me to be true to who I am um, and, you know, to be the light. And that's what it's called us to be in every area, in every area of my life. Your so. background, of course, your parents are also preachers themselves. Yes. So, I mean, one would expect. Yeah, but you've also just gone all out, not just restricted yourself to being at the church or being the preacher that you are, but you've also done things. You have a business degree right. uh, um, as well. And yes. you're also a motivational speaker right. as well. Now, all of this come together in a very multifaceted type of way that one doesn't know exactly who you are at right. each time. Right. You're the entertainer, right. you're the musician, right. you're the comedian and right. all of that. But on any given day, who do you put forward first? Um, I think that all these things are expressions of who I am. You know, I think the total sum of the whole. Um, you know, there's a saying that says, jack of all trades, master of none. Well, I beg to differ, I think jack of all trades, master of all. And when I say that is, you know, I, I saw a quote one time that says, 
your gifts are talents and God's gifts to you and then what you do with them and mm. your gifts back to him. Boom. So for me, I feel like, you know, it, it, we only have one life and if you've been gifted with so many talents, you know, make, you know, use of everything. You know, mm. Miles Moreau once said that the uh, most wealthiest place in the world, bless him, of blessed memory, is the graveyard because so many people die without fulfilling their potential. Mm. And so for me, I'm like, I want to die empty. So while mm. I'm young, you know, while I can still run around and jump from sets to pulpits to mm. conferences, mm. you know, to whatever that, you know, I find myself doing, let me do it now because the time will come when mm. my mind might want to do this, my body might not agree with yeah. it, you know. Well, the goal is to be working out till I'm like 90, but, <laughs> so you know. I, I'd assume that you work with a lot of young people. Yes. And young people these days are faced with so many challenges, so many pressures. I like to say pressures, whether it's cultural, whether it's from the home or whether right. it's from the church. Um, but yet they, are still, they still want to also uh, achieve their full potential. Right. And with all the vices that go around, how do you advise young people to be able to achieve everything that they want? I mean, pretty much like what you're doing. You are pretty much just doing everything at the same time. Right. I don't know if the challenge is the same as every other young person out there, but what would be your advice to them? Um, I think for me, first of all, I think it's to first know, I, I'd say people that no one knows a creation better than a creator, which is very important. Every, everything comes with a manual, whether mm. by TV or car, whatever the yeah. case is, an instruction from the creator that tells you basically everything you need to know. The first thing I tell people, you want to know why you're here, because everybody was trying to find purpose. What am I here for? What am I supposed to do? If you get connected to your creator, then mm -hmm. he tells you exactly where you need to be. And I've, I've come to say that purpose is not a place, but a state of being. Because mm -hmm. if you're always connected in every season, you know where you need to be. So that's one. Two, I tell people, um, embrace the full individuality of who you are, because I feel like there is no other version of you out there. And stop trying to bow to peer pressure to become something else or somebody else because that's a waste of the person that you are. No one looks like you. Just like we have different fingerprints, there's no one on the face of this earth that is like you. You were created specifically for a purpose that only you can fill and embrace that. And third, you know, thinking about future to answer your question is you don't want to make decisions today that can impact your future. A lot of times we think so much in the now, we don't think holistically. You know, um, we get caught up in the things. Yes, we want to have fun, but let's not let's not mortgage a future, you know, for the sake of fun. Let's not do things that we can't recover from, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so always thinking future and realizing that we only have one life. We, we don't get, it's not a game. We don't get a reset button. You know, exactly. you die and get, yeah. like, life two or life three, yeah. you know. So you always got to think about the future um, and make decisions that will better you, not just for you today, but for the future okay. as well. Speaking about the future, what do you have going for the future? That wow, it depends on you, to? In, in, in what area. Exactly. Um. <laughs> you know, it gets that confusing with you, right, but, but then right. generally, uh, something is all encompassing that we can look forward um, to. Well, so, I mean, you know, in, on the pastoring side, you know, we've been growing the cave and it's been good and we've just been blessed with the building. That's, we're excited about that. Um, on the acting side, uh, there's a movie in cinema right now called The Wait. Uh, I think everyone should go see it. It's okay. something I can speak to everyone. We have one coming out called Mamba's Diamonds on May 13th in cinemas. That's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, basically, it, you know, well, personal life is my daughter's birthday today. So oh, once I wow, leave here, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm rushing off to How go. How old is she? She's five today. She's five. So, yeah. I have a five-year-old as yeah, well. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah so I got two. So she's five. And... Um, going to go play daddy today because mm -hmm. you have to balance work-life balance as well as, you know, everything. Um, I have a book that I'm working on. Uh, I should have finished it and I've set it out now. So I'm putting myself, giving myself the accountability What's to finish called? my book. Um, what is love? Okay. You know, um, and talking about love, you know, because everybody, everybody defines love differently. And mm -hmm. so just my own spin on it and, and what I've learned from What is your spin on love exactly? Oh, we want to jump well, into that. that. Oh, let's wow. That. Let's, let's get see. a preview of the book already. <laughs> well, I mean, basically, looking at it from my Christian perspective and the worldview, I, I feel that love is not, is not a feeling. And people think that love is a feeling that you feel when you feel a feeling that you've never felt before. Yeah. And that's the problem. Because if you do things based on feelings, feelings come and go. So you hear things, people say, are falling out of love. Or, I, I, you know, because if you base it on a feeling, then feelings change. I got a question to go on that one. Yes. Like one of my producers would say, I have an addendum to that. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. But so what do you see happening with the Bill and Melinda situation? Ooh. Did they fall out of love? However, they're so, so 
pleasant about this whole yeah. thing. Is it possible for couples nowadays to actually fall out of love? Well, I, I, I really believe that love, from my perspective, you know, um, you can't give what you don't have. I, I believe that love is God. I believe that love is a choice. I believe that love is... It's not emotions, it takes work. Marriage is work. Exactly. It's exactly. intentional work. And that's been our argument this morning because it's some of us actually think that it's plenty of work that you put in individually, but one other person seems to think all you need to is pray. Now you're a preacher as well as a married man. Yes. And you just, we're talking about love. So yes. where do you stand on that? Do you have to put in all that work or must you just pray about it? Oh no, it takes, it's, it's uh, I think the two things. Why? Because I say one, love is God. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have God or know God, you can't give what you don't have. Because people think, when people say love in a human perspective is very conditional. I love you as long as you're faithful mm -hmm. to me, as long as you fulfill my needs. So when you stop fulfilling my needs and, and we stop it. meeting my expectations, I fall out of love with you. Uh -huh. If you look at love from the perspective of God, who loves you unconditionally, then you know it's not about what you do. He chooses to love your perspective. So I say it's both ways where you have to have God, but there are many people who are not religious who have successful marriages. Wow. So you got to put in the work. Put in the work, and then you have to put God in there Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Well, hey, we'd love to feed you, actually. Yeah. Very, very interesting uh, uh, perspective good. that you just put in mm. there. So why don't we just Please. already get over to the kitchen here? Thank you. Oh, it's a full house already. Oh, wow. oh would you look at that? And yeah, I Yeah, we've been expecting uh, you. Sorry. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Welcome Thank you. Kitchen, Jimmy. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Today's chef is Chef Addex, Hi, and chef. he's prepared breakfast for us. This okay. is uh, yum. Let, let me let you give us the name. Okay. My na the my, name of the okay. dish. This is yam and egg crab cake. Yes, yam and crab cakes, Benedict. So that's yeah. what we're having for breakfast this oh, morning. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, what do we have on every layer? You, you should okay. you should dig in. We'd like you to try oh, it. Yeah? Yes, please. Okay. Thank so you what very do we much. have on every layer? The cake on the. Okay, the cake on the. Okay. Followed by the avocado. Yeah. Followed okay. by the poached egg. Followed by okay. the hollandaise sauce. Yeah, it yes, does. So that's it. Let's see. Let's see what I, see what I think. Okay. Let's hear your verdict. That's good. Thank you. Sorry. You like it? Yeah, it's um, it's it's lovely. Um, the crack cakes are lovely. I like the avocado. Mm. Nice balance with the cream. I like it. You're good. Thank Great. You so mm. Fabulous. So that's you about much. it. Thank you so much, Chef mm. Addicts. Uh, You're love, doing well. I love Thank the addition you. of the avocado. Yeah. Anything with avocado, avocado works. Just, I don't know. Thank you, you so much. The color is the... Yes, mm. yes. Mm. You remember what we said? I said we were going to hold him to ransom. He just reminded me. So the color is still the same. It yeah. hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the lemon juice. Can we replace that with lime, by the way? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, so fine. So lime is cheaper. I'm so the saying. guys are busy salivating in, on the couch. Don't worry, we'll get there. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. eventually. Look, look at Mike roll. like... <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have to say a big thank you to everyone who's been part of the show today. We yeah. still have more for you every single day. Check us out online, of course. But uh, hey, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Right and early. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>